take the prestige of Butch Queen, member of the legendary House of Prestige, and attended the Ecstasy Ball in Chicago along with other members during the July 4th holiday in 2003. At 3 a.m., the venue where Ecstasy Ball was held was shut down. The continuation of the ball was moved to the after hour spot. When Casey and his fellow house members stopped at the gas station on the south side of Chicago to pump gas, Prestige was approached by two men, one of whom hit him in the face and knocked him unconscious. Luckily for Casey, his fellow house members Rico and Father out here were at the gas station to come to his rescue. Rico brought the men apparently while Casey was unconscious and one of them pistol was killed. Soon after, Father Alberti grabbed the bag from Jamie's prestigious car and hit one of the assailants in the head. Two men ran off when they took Casey's black necklace, t shirt, and earrings, and a diamond ring from another member. The sadly not ever victim of the LGBT hate fighters was able to get away with only beef and have their things stolen. February 15, 2005, somewhere in the glory in the streets of Brooklyn, another young gay black man has gone missing. There were crime scenes somewhere, the New York City police officer stated his name was Sean Purcell. February 17th, two days later at 3 a.m., the New York Transit workers found two suspicious bags alongside the tracks of the North Grand Avenue Station. The bag lined with another blue garbage bag that showed the two legs and the arms of the den, unidentified black male. February 23rd, workers of the Humble Street recycling plant in New York make another discovery. At this time, in another black bag, the bag includes fingerprintable hands, an assortment of bones and flesh, parts of a torso, a hand, a leg, a pelvis, the parts, 19 year old Rashawn Purcell. According to the autopsy, Purcell was kept alive for two days before the surgically dismembered. The murderer had a working knowledge of human anatomy. The cuts were clean and on the joints. The cuts were traced with a soft object before the heavier work of cutting through bones was performed. There was probably a struggle before death because the actual cause of death is still undetermined because Purcell's head is still missing. Through this, we begin to see the heterosexual society in a series of spaces with the queer and unsafe and vulnerable to violence to live as a queer person of color to experience the never ending ontological death within a heterosexual society. Girl will thoughts transforming the most basic of educational experiences into the role memorization of queer inferiority. And inferiority proves to be an actual social back in the actual streets where queers are kicked, bashed, and shot down in the streets, produces fleshly, disturbs the body, simultaneously police, disciplined, and exterminated by a population of power to openly hate us and add their hate to protect us through the conviction of the law of straight society and all levels. Queer trans and gender non conforming people, distinctly those from the low income backgrounds, communities of color, directly targeting numbers, not connecting space, and the sexual and gender identity for instance, for instance, not safe to disclose their identity to support nearly half 20,000 trans people in the region of been in prison or jail. Queer people further into the prison system, routinely harassed by local law enforcement, security, special queer and trans youth, often have less chance of success in schools, even college, pilots, and high surveillance, and increased police presence, school contributions, criminalization, dropout rates, and social behavior orders, and safe streets act and move. Queer trans youth from public space bumps on the street, queer trans youth have trouble shoving to not just play a Spaces for trans people, and these are the acts that foster overkill, which is unquestionably different from other types of violence. The law protects the safety of former violence by treating them as criminal aberrations, but the fact that heterosexual society bounds itself to a bargain bond of the price of queer life, their impact populace can never understand what it means to do violence and what is nothing. Stanley Eleven. Overkill pushes body on death, the aim of the ending of all queer life, the tactics killing must go beyond life and death, the war with death, the first few stab wounds, just the broad voices that remain to include signify this opposite way to understand queer as nothing, what is forced now simply murder to push them back without history. The human is nothing but necessary to misrecognition of humanity. The human resides in the space of life where the queer has to place a compromise for the hood of death. The queer is to negate the double of the subject of liberal democracy. Overkill is the proper expression of the riddle of queer nothing. There's always the overkill of what it means to do violence to what is nothing. When I say Bang, bang, the unconscious sing along. But this is no top 40 pop song. Instead, it's a mother crying because her fag is gone, taken from the womb by society, taken again by who killed by society. Except this time, he won't return with battle song and war stories. No, his mother will be telling his story to an empty room with a casket. A dead black faggot, no wonder the news tries to mask it. Still stuffing the white man with rainbow hatches, so he sits and waits. While gunshots echo through the streets, the street where nobody's seen it and nobody heard it. Is this a common misconception or is this just a bag of insurrection? When will it stop being an infection and start being a natural display of affection? When will law stop being protection and become a new section or commandment? When? When? When will there be an objection? The current legislative process protects gay panic and trans panic legal defense in the court case and self account for the violence and overkill that is done, particularly the LGBT people of color providing their escape route for justifying the violence American Bar Association in 2013. The gay panic and trans panic legal defense is surprising long as historical artifacts being spent status to jury violence, victim sexual orientation, gender identity to blame for the defendant's violent reaction, characterized sexual orientation, gender identity is objectively reasonable excuse to loss of self control, thereby mitigating especially its culpability for harm to WLCP individuals by fully or partially excusing the perpetrator of crimes against the LGBT victim and defenses, enshrining the law of those in the LGBT right to work less than other historically gay trans panic defense has been used in three ways. First, the defendant used gay panic and reason to claim insanity or diminish capacity. Second, defendants make a gay panic argument to bolster defense provocation by arguing that the victim's sexual advance, although entirely 
attorney, non-violent, efficient process, and use specific field search, defendants use gay trace bank, arbitration, vacation, self-defense, and these cases, defendants contend they agree to the victim was about to cause them seriously by the terms of the sexual orientation of gender identity. And current discourse on handguns does not account for violence that occurs to LGBT people of color, meaning that only the narrative process is able to account for the understanding of violence that happens there. See, as a spectacle for the consumption of white society, and literally left to disposable fear of retaliation, future attacks, and fear of suspension of police, all threats by police prevent violence from ever being reported, making it difficult to quantify. We literally never hear about them until their names become just another media story. This is Mobile Richie and Whitlock 11. Violence against LGBT is a problem that's difficult to quantify as underrepresented across more particularly law enforcement officials. Numerous factors contribute to the lessons of the report violence they experience, including fear of retribution by their attacks, schools, their sexual orientation, gender identity, immigration, sex, perception of police will not take the report seriously or will blame them for the violence participation in the informalized criminal economic activity, including sex work. And attempting to explain anti queer violence with statistics of their uh, Attempting to explain anti queer violence through statistical evidence is a theoretical material trap. With no head is never entered as a hate crime because its head is never found. And handgun just for never interrogates the assumptions about the way in which the violence plays out. It's not enough to know how many queer bodies are killed, but the way they are killed is just as important to this conversation because of the problems of overkill that stand in the The number of degrees, location, kind, and type, and frequency of attacks with statistical evidence that is meant to provide a violation that really happens in a legitimizing measure to dictate the ways we are making to understand harshly about anti queer violence is both a theoretical and material trap wall that makes strong not just about the claim security of violence statistics, have a way of ensuring that the head of the bill is never found with the card there. Robbie Edwards, 20 from Louisville, Kentucky, shot January 9th. Lumia Beard, 30 from Norfolk, Virginia, shot January 17th. Ty Underwood, 24 from Tyler, Texas, shot January 26th. Penny Proud, Mercedes Williamson, shot dead in January. Yasmin Payne, times of diseases. Christina Rigwall, London Channel, all fatally sad. Men are still going to fight for uh, it matters if you live and die. This performance starts with a formulation of community where the dance floor becomes the ultimate act of triage to maintain survival. This is Fracture and Eleven. For some of New York folks, the uh, marginalized LGBT youth brought to Christ to confront a few places where anyone cares if they live and die. The lethal combination of poverty and disease makes clear things in Bobby Street, Coast City, and Brooklyn a tear, where the underdog, the uh, underground ballroom drag team still says what they give a weekday to find queer kids hanging on the second floor, practicing dust walks, heads, performance spins, and dead space with the type of simply stay alive, they can't walk up the cart there. This necessitates that the role of ours to endorse the debate with the best of styles for engagement and the violence frame that's hanging on violence and hunger normativity. Thus, I advocate to embrace the ballroom as a fight to interrogate handgun discourse and explore the violence uh, explore the violence threats towards LGBT people of color. Embracing the ballroom and uh, navigating the violence facial relationship between their blackness and their queerness. The ballroom situates the way the body is understood in the ballroom of LGBT people of color literally work the body through the performance and the presentation of the body that's vaguely eleven. How do individual members of the ballroom get through a daily urban space, especially when they do not have the protection of the fellow ballroomers at the moment of impending danger working through the body through performance in the overall presentation of self? Black queer members of the ballroom community use performance to mark themselves as gender and sexual non supporting subjects to oneself. This performance of passing is a necessary strategy by which to avoid discrimination and make violence in the urban space. They literally perform to prevent their bodies making an impact on how they are seen in a society where the black body specifically is read as attached as such, and the body is read as clear in terms of gender and sexuality. They are treated as such, making persons both from the tribe to be homophobic and transphobic environment and performance is key to navigate the violence rate of handgun discourse to the macro level of society for ballroom kids. Performance not only undergirds the gender system but allows sexual minorities to develop mechanisms to navigate the homophobic, transphobic, and xenophobic public sphere mainly at level. Performance in the gender system that the other person ballroom offer more, more cultural import because they reflect the possibility for reconstituting gender and sexual subjectivity for reconfiguring gender and sexual roles in relation to creating ways to, uh, often, uh, to engage in often dangerously homophobic, transphobic, and xenophobic in public sphere. Black gender and sexual with sexually marginalized people towards life with uh, living others critique or asserting the ballroom members are obsessed with white femininity and illusions of material wealth and discount the actual labor with the members are constantly engaged to create alternative existence for themselves and their marginality, especially with regard to gender and sexual formativity members challenge the power of consequences of interpolation by assuming greater agency of the dialectic between subjectification and identification. Process. <coughs> okay, one more part. And and Barbara tries to back home and discursively challenge the way in which the image of oneself is both constructed and maintained. Barbara tests fundamental survival strategy and allows us to interrogate social structures. These performances are key to radical reclamation and protection when they leave the ball having space to do all that one intends is a necessary act of disidentification where space is performed in relation to the institution that makes it impression. This notion of performance allows one to form oneself in a moment of self reflectivity and has the potential to transform one's view on self in relation to the world. Johnson 2K6. Of course, it's the self-reflective self-reflectivity has the potential to transform one's view of self in 
information war for the disenfranchised recognition of such a maintenance of self-image, ankle tribunity function of staying in with social distancing codes of abuse, those performance contest and subvert down the but they are not simply reflected for expression of culture or even changing culture, but they make themselves the active agency of change. Performance reflexivity is the condition in which a group members acting representatively turn in or reflect upon themselves upon the relations, actions, social structures, ethical, legal rules, and other social components which make up their public self. Everybody ready for cross-section? Are we, are we opening cross-section? Does it work or how? Did we talk about that? Just go, okay. Uh, this is a beautiful case. This is a beautiful case. And you could actually spit for a white boy. But here's the question. Here's the question. You captivated the audience. Sure. You got their attention. You got my attention. Sure. But how can you prove that understanding gay black men trans individuals, queer individuals, through the ballroom, actually changes the orientation we have to violence against black bodies overall. Yeah, I think that's where you have misinterpreted the argument of the 1AC. The 1AC is not an articulation that we can understand all gay black life or all trans life uh, through the ballroom, but rather that we should particularly understand the way in which the ballroom was sure situated in those particular populations. So what, so, the AC oh no, I'm understanding that. That's what I'm Ballroom kids are included sure. in this group. But how do we, but what do we do after that? So, after, so we see the ballroom. Yes. We study it as a site of origin. Then what? What is the awareness get you? I think we use the ballroom as a site to interrogate. Can you ask this Sure. Now that. what? And I'm ready that. Now what? I get that. Yeah, I think the conversation is be how do we change legal structures? How do we change legal So what, what do you do about your awareness? How do you translate your awareness to the changing of those structures? Yeah, I think the way we take a stance that the discourse is the starting point. So if I grant you discourse and awareness, as you're saying. Then you vote at. Then you vote at. So if I so that my you want your third or your one? So your argument is that we create a kind of discourse in round based on how you understand using the ball, start with the ball. Yeah. Right? That if we get an understanding of the societal issues of how these people see themselves, this is your standard card, right? Sure. The self seeing itself in the world and creating the world. Right? Then yeah, that really is sort of awareness to do something. Now the standard card is actually about the way in which queer bodies, uh, particularly are always overkill. Right, that the way in which those bodies... I'm sorry, the Bailey 2011 card, I'm sorry. Which one? About self-reflexivity. The yeah, self-interactive world of self-reflexivity. To work their body to perform a system, navigate right. the lives and that's, and that's what we're doing, and that's what we're getting our knowledge from. Their performance. No, no, no. The, the argument is that the performance in the ballroom allows them to navigate violent spaces. Right, so how do right, we so learn Bailey from them? Contends, how do we learn from yeah, them? So Bailey contends that black LGBT folks in particular have a violent relationship to space, right? Sure. And so if they have a violent relationship to space, it means that oftentimes there is this kind of conflation between uh, how black Chris. studies don't want them and queer studies don't want them, and so the ballroom allows right. them to navigate Right, I get that. That's the structure. My question is, I'll grant you that. Sure. My question is, how do we study them such that we have fair policy? So how do I learn? So I, I grant what you're saying to the point. How do I learn such that that affects violence? In the, in I think the YAC is a good place for you to start to learn, but I would I don't like some of your lyrics, so what, what do I do this? With what? I don't like some of your lyrics, so what do I do now? I mean, I thought the lyrics were all right, but I also think that it's more... Well, you wrote them, so that's, that's, you know, risk of Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I also think it probably speaks to, though, the way in which those performances allow them to find the right... But you keep right. saying, so Bill, I'm making something up. Yes, you keep no. saying, Bill, how do we... I'm, I'm saying you're you're a white observer, sure. right? What? How do you interpret what you learn from them so they translate? That's the last question. I think that uh, the white is an accurate reflection of the way this ballroom is situated through the studies that have been done through Bailey. Okay. So, so you the, have to debate about the, the ethnography. Okay. Through the ballroom. All right. Yeah. 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 Y
So the role of the Bible is to with the best methodology of engagement with the violent terrain that is handgun violence and heteronormativity. So what is the thesis of Chris's position in this round? Yeah, understanding the ballroom is the best methodology. Okay, you said ballroom. Who can explain to me what is the ballroom? Okay, so Chris's position is that using the ballroom as a site of framing the round is where If we're LGBT people of color, or just LGBT people, can go and, and have a survival tactic away from heteronormative society. Okay, now the way that we're understanding this heteronormative society and how it affects trans people was through narratives. Now the way he did this seems to be kind of a preempt to what we can think of as decadence. Does anyone see kind of what the preempt would be? exist, so we have to look at it through narratives. That would seem to be kind of a preempt to a like the decadence position. Now, did anyone catch in CX where Curry was trying to get a link back into decadence? Okay, can someone explain that? Bailey? Too bad his car so
reading Winter the Deck, did you already have that, right? Yeah, I just didn't write that. Come on, y'all, give me a break. That's not how that went down. Winter, 
counter plan, decadence, and then counter. One, there is no hope to deal with the question of humanity, the potential of what humans should be, should think, and how they should act based on these things within that apology of white European models of thought. Regardless of the critique, the white call to action allows Europe to continue power to construct man. Winter 2006. You're right, the critical thesis of humanism, Western humanism, which raises the critical question of the continent, such as the media will have to be black and media not being against the social Copernican revolution, the imperialist exploration, the color of our conquest. Because I think the implications are education. You can't take them seriously. That's how you look at the world we have to do. You cannot solve the issue of conscience and determine the body of knowledge. You just can't. As within the medieval order of knowledge, there was no way that you could evolve. No, my computer. All right, got it. I got it. So you know what the, uh, what the way the world is in. Within the man's central model, you can solve the concept because man is pure, undisputed, biological perception, and then create a cultural consciousness constructed. That's what you do in the construction. Two, social systems of power must be discursively legitimated. The issue is not what we speak, but how we speak. Perpetuates very specific cultural determinations how systems work and respond to our discursive appeals. The affirmative position is not simply about a difference of values about the world, rather it's a difference about how the affirmative reifies and naturalizes the structure, system, and types of knowledge that perpetuate cultural concepts of white supremacy. Winter, 1992. To be effective, system power must be discursive legitimate. That's what's not the original set of institutions, system with legitimate and contrary to set of a equal form reality of structure in the cultural perception, just of how these cultural perception, code of language, system, how these systems the post structural structure. Uh, the political structures are each highlighted by public cultural aspects of how these original structural aspects, each cultural culture, other developments, and elementary cultural, cultural conception of the complex legitimate discourse are constructed. Three, the commodification of, commodification of sexuality by the Western Academy has presented. A decadent notion of black sexuality where the black man, gay man, the choir, becomes a site of institutional accumulation of anti blackness rather than the existence of transgression. Thomas, 2007. Commercialized gender sexuality is talking Western Canada is little or nothing about the neo colonial concepts that produce the material about a condition that embraces ordinary life, the dual political, the very essence of vilification, the nationalism, our nationality, and outside discussion of sexism, and homophobia. White nationalism never conceived or mentally by such by contrast, the black castle, but it's really formed the globalist counter surge articulation of gender sexuality, with regret revolution, articulation of matter hence for bourgeois commercialization of sexual discourse, the bosses of the neo colonial conceits of the United States of North America led by occidentalism, and they should be the Start part of the white power in the physical Western Academy, the institutionalization of the big, the black gay male. Four. Here's a big ass impact and another link to this theoretical shit. The affirmative cannot claim to address much less solve any problems of human existence without addressing racism first and foremost. Then in and of itself misses the anthropological cause of the colonial and neo-colonial differences the world over. This is not to say that racism in is, is in and of itself more consequential than other problems, but to say that racism is the template of modernity used to refuse humanity of other people to make them different kinds of things that do not deserve humanity. Our focus on race, class, gender, sexual orientation, poverty, global warming, the prison industrial complex, refugee migration from territorialization, African civil wars, and AIDS, depending on addressing the divestment of humanity from black people, is a template of understanding the world war utilization of this model of oppression. Winter 2003. The struggle for new millennials, what is the ongoing imperative of the security, well being of the ethno class, the conception of the human to man over himself, and the human self, the security, well being, and therefore the cognitive the behavioral autonomy of the human species, the self, ourselves, because this over representation was divided into one of the being power, truth, freedom, attempt to be colonial power, called the unsettled over representation of the Guangzhou, I Julie identifies the racism, ethnic, and complex, was based on the water majority of the brush from existing in the 15th and 16th century, on the Manolo identifies the foundation of the colonial difference of the world modernity institute itself, and these are all different facets of the ethno class um, identity by Zuckerman Bowman as the new poor, the category defined by the global level refugee economic immigrants. 
that's not the portrait of Christmas host of America. It's called Colin Panas got to wear the Ladam. And this got to wear the United States coming to the price of the criminal. Majority of the black skin and Latino interstate users make the rapid expense of the presidential complex together with the female girls. The kids have the welfare miles of being part of the ever expanding global transfer. You know, category of homelessness, jobs, and semi jobs, the criminalized drug offending prison populations. So the category of the death of the internal and the prison complex. The United States want to form the global archipelago constitute of the third, fourth world people, so called underdeveloping areas of the world. Not told about the concept of African African, 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 African,
the races. Well, it's against black males who thought that they were they were generally in the relationship with white males who lived in white female and asserted through the ontology and asymmetry between black males and females are ontological. Courage gender theory demands that the observer impose erroneous historical mythology to justify the argument between male and female development theory that supports scholars, students, and public and light to offer superficial knowledge of black males that because of the current situation, all the capital of narrow racial causes occur, the vulnerabilities of black men and boys, other black men and boys suffer from and deny anti black and falls and erotic the races and erotic particularly affect black male bodies, especially triggering the murderous predilection of whites and black male is the origin of the reconstruction of Western man, his liminality, which thrusts us into genre studies of coloniality and the contingency of the human. Curry 15. The task is not to fall the black males into the general category and typically resuscitate his ability to study the black males, not to write a direct condition, but rather to reject such an urge as such a be the counter for the new theory and simply the application of the generation of presumed character. He must be the subject of genre studies. Similar for similar your wish with them. Black male is not only non humans of all, but all one's capital population. For the laws of them and the constraint gap threatened the existing taxonomy categories and such of the Western man's limitations are described in Western law. Try that by effect, no, and mean the black male. What's reference to the black male is not actually condemned by the socializing principle of the negation of the man, not the black man who is castrated, is created as inadequate, degraded, and free, ever done by this white winter conclusion essay, no, he's involved with a reminder of the that the starry fellow of the job center center no human about the global new world of jobs but all point that does not have to acquire within the truth they are the truth they are instigated this is the truth we must now undo their narratively condemned status point of recognition of the black males the truth cultivates the limit of being as a genre study of death and diamonds the study created potential the particular type of being not allowed to count it so you didn't get adequate you created by the distance of western human man that's from the inspiration of the common models of the liberal roots of black males that is not less than that we understand being a category of our and subjectivity and the thoughts and justifying the logic within the black male relation of the world of thought okay on the road with what it's going to be what granted the debate just means that I've heard in our proof that gender is not the same as uh, is gender is sexual different than his a conception of colonial heritage. He doesn't have any answer for this. And all his arguments about performativity show that he can't conceptualize the world through coloniality because performativity is a postmodern study. He can't get to that. And on the songs he wants is going to be turned. The focus on homosexuality obscures the knowledge of the homo erotic. It's necessary to rethink performativity and vulnerability in light of the function of capitalism, racism, middle economy. E. Patrick Johnson, 2014. Should have read a little farther. Homo was already there, but it's a contemporary kind of homosexuality and discrimination vision, absolutely inappropriate linguistic apparatus, and the historical documentation of life and models and the isolated homo is and extended historical documents that have all conclusions to seal the presence of a racialized libidinal dynamic. The voice from the question of the the most compelling question of the face of the going 20th century, Woody Orgas, another question is already on the forefront of the legal models of 19th century, still be an edible consumed after the writing charts and catalysts and process of consumption. Unit direction follows everything from the black men towards white men towards each other. This cycle now is the of consumption to flow both ways. The result is a fierce rethink of the way to which capitalism and racism sexually plotted within the slave economy of friends of the middle formation of race. Um, relations for generations. And two, ballroom cannot account, overcome the stereotypes of black masculinity. The white gaze frames even ballroom performativity for the white male gaze. This is Owens in 2015. When I look at queer programs, the most of them and that's what it tends to be a social disconnect between the reality that portrayed the public and have a private time with pattern of uh, black LGBT being drag ballroom performers or hypersexualized eye candy takes flight in many gay social scenes. This is very element that excludes other black gay expressions candidate to the white queer gaze. The various identities of gay of, of a queer individual of color have not evolved to the many institutions and spaces responsible for allowing them and the community most acceptance of the equality the LGBT community is holding the statement to rally around social issues, and we must recognize the artificial and gender to truly understand the violence or co coloniality on black bodies. Gender turns blackness against themselves, striving for humanity, rather than recognizing colonial in him and in 2010. The search for sexual distinction and construction of gender distinction that results from the observation test performed by each sex to affirm that this type of sex and gender characteristic often they become conflated whether you see sex you see gender and vice versa but if I'm right about colonial and gender distinction between the human and non-human the sex has become same alone gender and sex could not both be in several tied and racialized the colonial civilized and mission of euphemistic master and brutalized system people's body through the unimagination of change of violence sexual violence violent sexual violation control reproduction systematic terror the civilized mission of the argument of gender that comes as a judgment turning the colonists to human beings without a colonial goal the difficulty but imagine the goal can't be appreciated clearly once the transformation of colonized men and women into the transformation of Tonight, but in nature, but turning the colonizers against themselves within colonial and civilized missions repertoire. And four, awareness of political issues are not ontological or anthropological. The Stanley evidence asserts a political designation on the basis of challenging the notion of the human. In this way, Stanley presupposes that queerness is the inhuman, yet history shows that all blacks have been non human and overkilled. This shows that the case cannot solve for the ontology of blackness behind overkill or the political awareness that changes our theory of the race non human. Oh, yes, it is a very interesting argument. What is the status of the counterpoint? Uh, hmm. That is something I really think about. What is, I don't know. I don't know, what you, what you do? Uh, yeah, you do. Well, it's educational. I mean, what, like, what's the kind of, what's the kind of play that you encounter in the debate? I mean, it's an option at this point. I mean, I feel very confident in this position. This is this is this position. Okay. I don't want to I don't want to get right. bogged down. Yeah, I don't want to get bogged down in theory because I want to develop so whatever you literally whatever you want. So I don't want to get some counterpoint. I guess we'll make this position probably would be a test of competition. Any permutation? Okay. All right. Um. So.
So why does the counter plan start with the distinction of black uh, male and female? Why do we, we don't, start with we don't like gender. Well, I get that, but you start with the distinction between male and female. So how does that account for those who don't identify as male or female? Well, this is a historical argument. The text only says specifically. I get that. We live in reality now, not just. Oh no! Oh no! 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 no. <laughs> My argument is that the Lagoon's argument sure. is that there are certain kinds of sexualities that are not that are not categorized by sexual distinction. But when we use certain identities sure. that presuppose gender, I, we lose that. I guess so I'm question, not I'm not worried about your political designation. I guess my question is, how does the counter plan resolve those distinctions? Because it shows that they're a function of the force of the. So what does that mean for those that have to live in the reality of the same thing? Your overkill evidence. I'm not sure how the counter plan. No, 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 no. Let's go back to your overkill evidence. Sure. Your overkill evidence. Your overkill evidence makes a very clear distinction between human and non-human, right? Mm -hmm. In so far as it makes that distinction, I'm saying that that distinction is not based on political identities like queerness or trans, but on colonial identities that were that were, that were denied humanness, manness, and womanness. So my claim, no, because we're not going to get caught up in this political identity stuff. My claim <laughs> is that I am anthropological. Okay, so let's so get, let's get that straight. Like, <laughs> uh, I guess my next question is, be, where does the one thing talk about that homosexuality? Oh, if you go through that. I mean, like, where well, is, is it your why does the ballroom relate to, like, just, why is uh, the ballroom just a question of sexuality? No, I don't think that it is just a question of sexuality. The E. Patrick Johnson sure. 2014 card yeah, says, <laughs> says that what we miss in our understanding of performativity, it's yeah. a really good card, because what's his book? Is that homoeroticism <laughs> is operating beneath our notions of identity? Yeah, so why doesn't the way he already resolved this question of homoeroticism? Because he says, he says, says gets, for example, the way in which Rashawn Brazil right, gets killed and his body gets mutilated, why doesn't that count for the homoeroticism? Right, because notice, because notice the decadent move. Now you assert that because you've given them the channel of the narrative, that the narrative has all no, of these no, rich historical the meanings. No, it's not. No, it's not. The Stanley the evidence is very shots, good. Right? I, in the yeah, HR but that's not the same thing as homoeroticism. Okay, why does the so, way account for homoeroticism? Because you're not giving me an articulation so of how white manhood, uh-huh, you don't give me an articulation of how white manhood specifically in trying to realize its perfection as the Western man and that's, patriarch that's has this as a dynamic. What's the link to the decadent argument? Because you're decadent. What is the link? How am I that? Well, you you gave a pretty good example right here where you recounted the story and said the story. AC, that's the that's, that's the story you utilized. What is the link in the one AC as to why it's that? I'm telling you, the story that you gave and your utilization of it now say that it has certain meanings, which I can't tell. You're just saying you're saying this story means homoeroticism. I don't know what that means. That's how the narrative becomes new. You can perform it. Okay, like <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before we before we talk about each individual case, uh, what is what is Curry's argument in terms of critiquing the money scene? Curry, what do you think of it? Okay, so that would be the first frontiers critique in which Curry is saying there are certain individuals who are not regarded as human, right? And the idea that we should have an anthropological starting point gives us a better epistemological starting point in terms of what we start from. How about decadence? Who thinks they can explain the decadence argument? Sacred. Okay, so it seems that a process that the link to decadence is that the one narrative of that one person being killed in an overkill type of way cannot totalize the experience of homoeroticism or cannot functionally define what black and gay bodies have to go through. 
the counterplan. So Curry's argument is that race should come before gender. Can someone give me a word for why? What did we say? Race and sex come before gender. The thesis of Chris is that we should use the ballroom to interrogate Hank about. What is the one main point Curry says about the ballroom? Just start with only 15. So Curry's argument is that the ballroom itself is colonial because it has been colonized by the white queer body and it excludes those who identify as poor. Now, someone, someone on there with the Johnson-Johnson debate. Chris's argument is that this identification is key because uh, performativity by the body, for the body, is key to challenging sh social structures. What is Curry's Johnson evidence say? Brooke. Okay, anyone else? Nobody got voted. David? I don't know. I have something about the history. Uh, um, I, I have heard about uh, the history of the former writers about this college. Uh, I have heard about the history of the college. Okay, so Curry's Johnson is evidence, which is the same author, says that homo and the idea that performativity has been colonized by the white queer body says that homo eroticism and the idea that performativity has been utilized in the academia has has been conformed to a capitalist and racist structure in which now performativity it is, it is in and of itself is not by the body anymore, right? It's something that has been colonized to fit other modes of democracy. Let's see what you have to Say 
Right. His idea is, as we as said in context, we don't want gender. Gender is a wrong starting point. So his role is about function, he says, you can link it to your own role about, but it's a bad link because I'm criticizing how you formulate what the about means in terms of gender besides where it's So the one ER should be filled with some no links, maybe some link terms, some solvency deficits, a couple terms, and then extension of the ball or the thesis or how we should frame it. All right. Um, the important thing to, to recognize, so you remember we talked a lot with people who debate in front of me about how strategies go together, right? So it's important to understand that for the way that I conceptualize this is based on one central point, that when we talk about performance or the queer body, we should not go do so under a gender structure, right? So the counterplan tries to get us from out of that. Winters criticizes that. Decadence flips on that, right? The performance of this, of this. So, and then my earnings on case deal that. All that has a story, right? That lets me utilize. There are different parts of the story, but that's what's that's the central argument. So, when Chris gets up to answer that, he's going to push back against me on whether or not one, the ballroom is actually where we should start, and two, what happens to these specific identities, like it was asking me by a cross sex in relation to gender. Everybody understand that, right? Don't get happy in the spectators. It's a whole different game when you're on the Really? Really? Yeah. Just to, just to let you 
you the language transbodies are situated in the sex code with things. He tries to create a monolithic understanding of male and female this that transbodies never get to account for. That is the Stanley evidence that is, the Lambo evidence that is, the Bailey evidence. In fact, shit, it comes by the entire word I see because that is exactly what the word I see is claiming that he says we have sort of a gender construction because, uh, because it's somehow a person of black body, but I don't understand why this links in the world with the one I see already a guy from the black body, which means he gives us all best only permutation they want to solve. Now, he go ahead and try to stand up in the next speech and kick it because he said it's just for this one, the context of permutation, and I wish he would go for it in this debate because it obviously is going to prove that the, that the one I see is going to count. Now, the other benefit to the permutation is that he doesn't count for the way this survival strategy is actually played out the way in which trans bodies have to enact a form of gender realness, a form of a racial realness to determine whether or not they get out the subway that is the analysis of what happens in Paris is burning in a documentary that explains that the way in which being described and not this treat is just a spectacle for white depression when she leaves the ballroom that she has killed because she does not win well enough in society regardless of what he thinks at the end of the day. We are structured, we are inherently situated in the way in which gender bodies are constructed, which means he has to win sovereignty that he can somehow get rid of the gender by air, that he can somehow get rid of the construct of gender at the end of this debate. He is not able to do that only the way I see him resolve. Which means that the other train actually makes sense in this debate. None of them. Literally. None of them. The stories of the way in which we follow our bodies. The stories of the way in which we are able to situate our bodies between all the darkness are true in the world, which I'm going to survive the policies for heat. He doesn't resolve the question in the next speech about why survival politics are uniquely few, why it's uniquely important to, uh, to, to the way in which trans bodies and the uh, black folks and key bodies and uh, the way in which that is situated means he cannot win this round. The one issue does not start from the discussion of the premise of sexuality. In fact, it starts from the discussion of the way in which ballroom is necessary to survive, to literally get off the bus. Now, he's going to make the argument that Stanley is the least definite, but I think that's probably way that's true because the muscular evidence already tells you why we have to do that. Also, the, the piece that's right after the muscular that tells you that to actually try to quantify or to theorize in the academic terrain is actually a material trap because it is not possible. It is literally academic fraud for you to stand up and say you cannot read a narrative about the way in which overkill happens to black bodies and the way in which overkill happens to, uh, to poor bodies in this particular state. Also, the Stanley evidence is very contextual to the way in which black LGBTQ members are already killed, which means you start from the contention that black is already a form of overkill, which means I resolve that during none of those arguments make sense. Yes, really.
Like, they need this one performance to be able to derive the value in our trigger from our Okay, good. Now, Chris says that he needs to do three things to win. Can you name the three things? Can someone name the first thing? Uh, he said that 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 he Okay, the third argument was that it's the best way to check back the mechanism and how they can't like claim to exist and how the coloniality of race arguments are not unique. That was the third argument that they have to do. Okay. So based off of this strategy and how most of it was played on the AC, how do you all think Dr. Curry is going to be responding to this in the next speech?
start by. Enter. And then straight down into this little bit. Yeah. Okay. Got to play on the straight down. tells you that he is seen by white gay males as drag ballroom performers, that the white male gays colonize him and the LGBT movements exclude him, and you still kill out for a gay white man. A black man is segregated in first generation Louisiana, tells you that his interest is black males, he reads Sylvia Winters, he reads his own research, he tells you we need a new way to understand and backs it up with theory, he's called elitist and academifying black male existence. But what do you know about black men? This debate rolls into one simple fact. He hasn't read enough about black men to talk about him yet, but you clap for him anyway. Let me show you why evidence matters more than two performances. You're going to extend the term that homosexuality kills homoeroticism. This is a Johnson 2014 card which argues that in looking to queer identities without understanding the historical generation of violence, you mistakenly think that they're killed because they're gay. That is the wrong assumption. Johnson himself, his own author, says that is the wrong analysis. Black men are killed because of black maleness, and that is what pushes us into the whole more right. Something that's not based purely on identity, but based on white libidinal desire for black men. Something that he hasn't talked about. We answer this in cross-examination. He says overkill, but he's not answering that the reason that black men go to shoot black men, the reason they take pictures of Trayvon Martin is because they have a whole right fantasy. Also, it's in the Curry 2015 evidence. This is exactly what I argue on the counter plan. That the reason that they're the rich of the earth and the dawn of the terrorists is because white men have a libidinal fantasy towards the black male body. He's going to try to tell you that they need survival strategies. That's funny because I'm a black male and I don't see too many of them surviving. That means that my evidence is directly related and the word of the Johnson evidence says that racism, capitalism, etc. are pushed forward by homoeroticism. You're wanting to see the better evidence. This takes out the case. He's going to try to tell you bang bang, but guess what? Another black man says you ain't trying to hear us. You don't want to include us into your movements, which means that coalitions and awareness he gets from case doesn't solve that. That's the number four card that goes completely drunk where I end up inside his family evidence. He's going to tell you that he's getting awareness that the ballroom is a site. That's nice, but how does the ballroom site translate into black people's being, lives being saved? How does the ballroom site that everybody class for mean that black men who are still going to fall outside your gaze because you don't see black males as being condemned by homoeroticism and being sexually attacked because they're straight or because they don't fall within these gender performances of how we assume heterosexual privilege, not going to be a death. How are you going to solve for the fact that George Zimmerman said he was going to rape Trayvon Martin, but he's not included as a queer male identity? How do you assume the fact that Deion Payne was actually penetrated by two white men? This is what my evidence says. That's what a black scholar's evidence says. That's what Winter says. That means that the case cannot solve by looking at the ballroom. You don't have historical currency for the ontology of black manhood. And on black male conflict. I'm fine with this being a part, but you know what? You should have answered the term. The first term says that gender theory is a misunderstanding of black males. That means that if you're going to vote for him, as best he gets an understanding of certain political identities. He doesn't get a certain, he doesn't get an understanding of certain of what those identities mean for black people generally. Meaning that you can solve overkill. My card directly takes out the response that you can get to the human and non-human for queers. There's not an answer to that. He's going to give you a story that says that we look at the side of the ballroom. What does the ballroom have to do with why white men historically shoot black men on the streets? This is a survival strategy for a group of black men, not all black men. This doesn't solve for all the people that are finally, that sees violence on an everyday basis. And we need a new way to study black men. This kicks back the Johnson evidence. He's going to say performativity is the key, but he's not getting anything. He concedes winners, so that means that any kind of discussion that you get on the black queer body is his obsession with it. Notice the argument. The Thomas evidence says and I find it interesting, because he's also a black gay man, that the academy commodifies the stories of black gay men. That the reason that they like them is because they can push back nationalism, they can push back progressive or radical black politics. So you point to black homosexuality, because that's where he gets to use the words we. This is the academic discourse that says that black men are not distinct, that they have the same value, the same interest, 
in the society have the same types of theories. That's not the case. What Chris is trying to do is overlook the fact that academic theory uses black gay men to displace the way that we get to black liberation. This means two things. One, it re-encircles the gender category, and two, here's the biggest impact. It's the reason that you can break people down into inferior and uh, superior inferior ontologies. That's why the Witcher's Emma says you saw for poverty, you saw for age, you saw for discrimination. Because he wants to tell you that these people are excluded. This is what his own Lando Emma says. They're excluded. The stereo, they're excluded. There's this barrier between human and non-human. He says the human is the heterosexual, the non-human is the queer. But guess what? You have people that disagree with that utterly because they're saying that that's a construction of academic theory. That in reality, colonial structures worked out in such a way that all racial groups were distorted sexually, and all racial groups were raped, and all racial groups had genocide. Now you tell me what is your reason for believing that a specific identity politic is going to solve better than actual people. On to the line by line. He goes straight down because he just can't cover the role of the ballot. He says bang bang, but he's not getting any kind of salty on the fact that he doesn't solve the root cause of violence. Notice my analytic on the role of the ballot is not about handguns and heterosexuality. It's like what drives the heteroticism, the erotics of black male death. They shoot black people because they have an erotic fascination with the body. He can't get to that. At least I saw that back with the Wiggins argument, was that we have to recognize that homosexuality and the erotics of heterosexuality are a continuum of racial anti blackness. Not an argument to that. He says that we need to talk about handgun violence. Our right, answer that is not unique, and the case of the root cause of violence, the second, or the, 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 the critique, so the root cause of violence, he says that the material structure is historical, what we do in the real world, come on, Chris, so you come up here and read a whole bunch of performance terms and a bunch of performativity, but then you try to convince people that that's the real world, he's reading E. Patrick Johnson, the dude got a distinguished chair in Northwestern, come on, that's a contradiction, and the fact that I'm reading evidence from other black men, I'm reading evidence from other historians that tells you that white guy was included by this kind of dynamic, he never gets to it, that means that my evidence is compared to other because it doesn't have any sources from black men, and a black man tells you that you're absolutely wrong that the issue is how it's going to get experienced the political because it doesn't give you any kind of survival techniques in the actual world of challenging. He's at the problem with the hell the U.S. structure, so all my terms are not unique, so I can't quantify the structure. Come on, man. This doesn't solve back the argument about how you utilize and commodify the black gay experience. This is also the old evidence that you can't get any kind of solution where blood steel or LGBT groups are going to come back and solve this. He says that's not unique on that. Day. Come on, man. This is bullshit. You read a performance of ad and say that the only way that we can possibly know about this community is if you, we, we trust you. He reads Stanley, he reads Bailey, I read Woodard, I read Winter, and we have Vincent, uh, we have, uh, Vincent and uh, Wilcox, Dwight Dwight McBride. This is not his research. This is not what he does. So that means the decadence is uniquely performed in the way that he's commodifying black bodies. And it's going to turn back on this on Stanley because the decadence argument says that we can't get true liberation. This is not about survival strategies. His survival strategies don't get anywhere. He conceded that awareness does not change politics, anthropology, or ontology. That means that he's going to give you a speech, but he can't get to anything that's actually worthwhile. He's going to say the body's abstract. Business. Come on, Chris, you haven't published anything. You know better than quoting yourself. And that means that his evidence doesn't even talk about that. The, he doesn't even talk about how the black bodies are actually commodified. If black people are asserting into debate rounds, that means the body of according to his evidence would be represented and all my evidence says that we can reconfigure the way that anthropology race is working in the society. That means that I escape his argument of bodyman. And this is also the Winters and the Thomas Lee that says that he's commodified the black gay male. This is not giving us anything. This argument about Bailey, that feeds the link. The argument about Bailey is that performativity is self reflected because he reads it from the certain world. That means that decadence not only relates to this, he can at best understand it, but it at least turns to sovereignty. Important argument. The decadence at least denies the sovereignty, so he can't get anything. I already has the cover plan. Look, it doesn't matter, but it still turns the case. He says that we got a problem when they see the courts and Kill, um, could kill for black people, the one, the one AC, cross the the one AC, the whole thing is a dissonance of counterclad. That's absolutely not true. He's not winning these songs. All I have to win is that his awareness doesn't translate to anything. All he's got is like, oh, let's go look at the ballroom. I'm saying that I give you a historical and actual political realm in which black men are being killed. A black man, a gay black man, told you that the LGBT movement will not include them, that it doesn't work. But you're still saying we should look at the ballroom. The ballroom functions as a stereotype. That's why I read it on as a term, because there are other black male identities that are going to be situated with our historical complexity, not answered by him. Group the 10, the 11, the 12. Come on, Chris, you know better than this. He's arguing that black people are killed, and this is demonstrating how Sancho had a construct of gender. Listen, gender's bad. Black people don't have genders. It's a historical argument, it's a theoretical argument, so that means two things. That means that all black male death doesn't exist on that level. Gender doesn't capture. You've got three cards, winters. Curry, E. Patrick Johnson, and Owen saying it doesn't work out this way. It doesn't translate into politics. He says the ballroom is key. He keeps repeating the same thing. Show me how words lead to politics. And who's the last three arguments? Come on, man. I still outweigh on the Witcher's evidence. I saw for the distinctions that generate handgun violence. And he turns, he trades off with how we understand the homoerotic dimension, which means that all of his nine, his overkill, 
All of his songs he's having this fundamentally depends on the fact that black people are being killed based on identity. I'm arguing that black men are being killed because they're black males and not human, and he obscures that reality. Deal with the truth. Read some evidence. Yeah, 
clearly not answered that question for you. Look at your flow at the end of the round and said, has he resolved the question of can you go home at night and not be killed when you get off the sofa because you look a little too gay because you dress too white, that's a woman. If you cannot answer that question on the one and see, then you will vote S. 